it's good to be here. You guys probably know me. My name is Caitlyn Jenner. I'm gonna... Thank you. I'm beautiful. I look like Jesus came back, but he forgot why. You know, like, I know there's something I was supposed to do. No, I look like somebody you randomly punch in Grand Theft Auto. You, you just see me walking on the street. You're like, oh, his hair's going everywhere. That's going to be good. Um, somebody told me I looked like Fabio with leukemia. And that's, that's not allowed. Not funny at all. No, I am actually a Nepo baby. I am. You guys might know my brother, Ronald McDonald. I, uh, yeah, we come from a long line of something. But yeah, good to be here in Dunedin Brewery. Been performing it here for many years. I feel like as long as they've had comedy, I've been doing stand-up here on this TikTok creator stage. Look at this beautiful stage. They're like, we're gonna, we're gonna put a lot of effort into 17 square feet. And then, and then the rest of the room will look like a stage in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. This is a good room. It's like a, it's a ski lodge, the furthest you could be from a mountain. It's beautiful. I've never seen a basement in an attic, you know, like, they're breaking the laws of physics. I like the things up here on the roof, too, this guy. It looks like there should be, like, a CrossFit class climbing atop those things here under the, the John Lennon borrowed time poster. Wow, yeah, borrowed. It's like he knew, huh? Oh. Poor Johnny. No. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's just good to be here in Dunedin with all you guys. I know, Dunedin, I know, Dunedin. Very cool. Dunedin, where you can get a studio apartment for three grand. Wow. It's really come up. But it's worth it. You're close to the beach, maybe? I don't know. Is there a beach here? Yeah? What's the beach called in Dunedin? Clearwater. Nice. There we go. Wow. That was, that was the funniest possible answer that could have happened. I like that. This is like a Goosebumps book. You decide the punchlines. We work together. I'll give you half of this beer if you want. <laughs> On the house. The state fair just wrapped up. Did anybody go to the state fair this year? No. But you guys are too good for white trash Disney. So are you telling me? I love the State Fair. The State Fair is amazing. The games are impossible, though, at the State Fair, right? Every game is like, see if you can touch my tongue without getting your finger bit. I'm like, the guy always bites it. I don't even think he has a tongue. I've been deep in there. And still, no tongue. And the prizes suck anyway. Like, do you really want any of this shit? It's a, it's a sword. Whoa. Oh, yeah, every prize is like a six-foot-tall Tasmanian devil wearing a Super Sonics jersey. It's like, that's going to take up half your trailer. Like, where do you even put this? But no, I, I look like I work full-time at a dunk tank, you know? <laughs> Throw the ball, pussy. It's winning for your girlfriend. There was no dunk tank this year, actually. I... How... What... What world have we come to where we can't handle a dunk tank clown shitting on us? It's pathetic. I miss a guy telling me I look like a cracked out Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. I miss that. I like it. It's humbling. But, um, yeah, the, the fair is just such a beautiful place because it feels like it's the only place where everybody comes together. You know, like, the fair is the only place where you'll see, like, a pair of Confederate flag Jordans. Okay. But no, the fair is inspiring, truly. The fair is inspiring every time I go. Because it's like you're telling me that these toothless swamp people can build and rebuild an entire city every few days, but Congress can't work. Like, we have the smartest people in the country trying to run things, just can't make it happen. Meanwhile, these half-breed mongoloids are putting together a tilt-a-whirl that holds you by the neck safely. <laughs> Unbelievable. They got the freak show at the fair. Love the freak show. But it's the fair in Florida. 
So pretty much the whole thing is the freak show. Oh yeah, the state fair. You'll never see so many 90 day fiancés than at the state fair. You see these people, you're like, how could you have possibly even met each other? It's like a 600 pound lady and then a Jamaican guy with dreads down to his heels. Like what weird forum did they possibly link up in? But uh, yeah, the freak show at the fair. Uh, you know, you gotta pay separately for some of the attractions. There's World's Smallest Woman. $2. You can go see the World's Smallest Woman. And uh, it's just like a table with blinders around it in a tent. So uh, we watch a guy go in, you know, to see if we want to do it. So we watch this guy walk in. He walks around to the front of the table. He takes off his sunglasses. He looks at her for a second. And then he puts them back on. He walks out outside. And we go, well, what was it like? Is it worth it? And he goes, yeah, she's pretty small. But, uh, shouldn't let you pick her up or nothing. This guy thought you could pick her up for two dollars. What a deal. I don't know what freak shows he's going to, but I want to go to those. Yeah, the fare's brutal. I mean, the food, unbelievable. Deep fried butter, deep fried, deep fried ice cream burgers. They had deep fried Kool-Aid. Too. Like, they've turned a liquid to a solid, somehow, just to eat it. This year was a little bit different. They had deep-fried vaccines. I thought that was cool. I only got the first one. You had to get two balls into a bucket to get the second one. I think I'll be all right. I think I'll be all right, because as we all know, COVID's not real. Um, wasn't it nice to live in a state that COVID didn't get to? Yeah. It's kind of like when you're too dumb for Jedi mind tricks. That's Florida. Like, we're just all so fucked up, COVID never stood a chance. You know, COVID gets in our bodies and is like, I'm gonna fuck up your lungs! And the Marlboro Reds are like, get in line, dude. I'm messing with this guy for 20 years, he's not changing. Yeah. With, uh, with that being said, though, I actually, uh, I had to miss Christmas with my family because of COVID. So there were some positives. Wasn't all bad, yeah. It's just funny to think about how we're gonna brag about surviving COVID in the future, you know, the way every generation brags about their hardships, like the wars or depressions. But how are we gonna brag about surviving COVID? What are we gonna say? Oh yeah, it was brutal. We're all held up in our house with nothing but HBO Max and Uber Eats and... I was on unemployment, so I made more money than I would've made. How'd you do it, Grandpa? That's crazy. Um, yeah. I don't have health insurance, but I bought a bunch of crystals with my stimulus check. So, my throat chakra is okay. I think I'll be all right. Yeah, I don't have a primary care doctor, but once a year I see a shaman and get a metaphysical. So, <laughs> doing all right. <laughs> no, I, I ate at Taco Bell a couple days ago and I still don't really feel okay. I had, a, I had a quesarita, a quesalupa, and a quesadiarrhea, and I'm waiting to feel, I don't know. Doesn't Dua Lipa sound like a Taco Bell item? I hear, I hear that name, I'm like, yeah, let me get a double Dua Lipa and a Baja Blast. That sounds nice. But um, I don't know if you guys remember this, there was a campaign about a year ago on TV for Taco Bell. They said, recently, people have been questioning the integrity of our beef here at Taco Bell. So for one week only, crunch wraps are 79 cents. <laughs> and that's an interesting marketing strategy. To be like, really, it's shitty? We'll make it cheap, you'll eat it, fucker. Like, can you imagine any other business doing some shit like this? Like if McDonald's was like, yes, it turned out that one of our McNuggets was a baby's foot. But, but for one week only, it's nickel nuggets. Go nuts, fatties. What the hell? Yeah. Speaking of good food, every woman who works at Popeyes can beat your ass. You, you ever notice that? And they're mad you're there. They're pissed. You walk into Popeyes, they act like you just walked into their house. They're like, really? You're going to walk into the restaurant while it's open? I'm like, did I? I've left Popeyes without ordering, just because they've seemed like they're in a bad mood. I'm like, I'll come back when you guys are willing to take my shit. But, no, right now uh, Pizza Hut has a bacon stuffed crust pizza 
Yeah, bacon stuffed crust pizza. Just in case you were wondering, how can I die now? <laughs> bacon stuffed crust pizza. But stuffed crust pizza, still a relatively new concept that rolled out around the year 2000. But pizza making technology has been the same for thousands of years. You're telling me not one person thought to put cheese in the crust of pizza before the year 2000? Or are they really strict in Renaissance Italy? Some kid runs up to his dad, Papa, I put a cheese in the crust, I call it a stuffed crust pizza. And his dad was like, no son of mine will be making a stuffed crust pizza. It's a Jamaican immigrant who moved to Italy and adopted a kid. It's a very interesting family. Now you guys are cool. This is a nice room. I like everybody, you know, we're all uh we're just hanging out on a Thursday. Wow, yeah. It's fucking Thursday. As uh as John J as they mentioned, uh I was on some sort of television T V show before. I was on uh I was on a dating reality show. Uh yeah, you guys might have heard of it. It's called Bang Bus. I uh I know. I wish it was a one with a girl, but no, no I, was on a, I was on a dating reality TV show called Are You The One? Has anybody, heard, this looks like a table that would have heard of it. Is you, you guys look like contestants on this show. Do you, do you, have you heard of the show? No. Yes, okay, you have. Did you, I was on season one. Nice. Were you born yet? <laughs> okay. No, uh, yeah. Yeah, are you the one? A dating reality show. It's a very weird concept because they were trying to mix like dating and love with like daily competitions and challenges. So like you hear shit like, yeah, I mean, I thought we were in love, but then you got third place in the obstacle course. You know, <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Yeah, very weird daily challenges. All right, you guys have five minutes to get all the yogurt from that bathtub into that box over there using only your underwear. The winner receives the golden douchebag, which they can use to have sex with anybody in the house. It's like, that seems, you know, how's that legal? Yeah. I'm just bitter because they never used it on me. But yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting show. After being on television, you know, sometimes people see in your public, they want to say stuff to you. I was at a bar the other night, somebody goes, hey, you look like that guy from TV. And I go, I am that guy. And he goes, nah, he wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, so I left. I'm not letting my reputation get ruined. Yeah, I just thought it was so funny. I just thought I was too cool to be at a bar in Tampa. And I was like, where would I be? He said, Beverly Hills. <laughs> It's on one reality show. Who do you think this is? Um, I did live in Hollywood for a bit, which was interesting. One time, uh, a guy runs up to me on Hollywood Boulevard. He goes, is this you? He's got a picture of me on his cell phone. And I go, yeah, it's me. And then he turns to his kid and he goes, see, it's him. Take a picture with him. And the little kid goes, dad, I don't want a picture. And uh, yeah, that's a good level of fame to be. Where it's like, you know me, but you don't want to admit it maybe you don't want to the shame of being in a picture with me but um at the height of my reality whatever um i got invited to the reality tv awards nominees party which is yeah try to think of the least talented people you can and that's the room yeah it was a lot of survivors and top models and these master chef junior cunts you know it's think they're better than us because they can grill a cheese sandwich or whatever. But, um, yeah, so Reality TV Awards, nominees party. And they're going over, like, the categories for stuff people can win. One of them is called, like, Best Freak Out. That's an award you can win for the Reality TV Awards. Which, like, how does that speech even go if you win? You know? I just want to thank the rest of my castmates for being pieces of shit, pissing me off. Thank you. But, um, so I meet a guy who was on uh, Dancing with the Stars. And I asked him the question that I'm sure they love to hear. Uh, Were you one of the stars? And he goes, yes, I was one of the stars. Go, okay. And uh, so this guy turns out to be a, you know, a bit of a frat bro. 
He's like nut tapping people at the bar and shit. I'm like, okay. But he goes, I've got a big mansion right around the corner in, in Beverly Hills. I'm like, that's where the kid said I should be. And so he, he's like, yeah, you can come to my mansion after the, the thing if you want to party with me. I'm like, okay, that sounds, that sounds great. So I go to this, uh, this star's house and I were hanging out. Everything's relatively normal. And uh, he's got a hot tub. And I go, oh, cool. Can I jump into your hot tub? And he goes, fuck yeah, you can jump in the hot tub. And then he strips down completely naked and gets in the hot tub. And uh, so I stop and I go, hold on. I go, whoa. I go, you're not like, you're not like secretly a gay dude trying to fuck me, right? And he goes, whoa, dude, what? No, come on, don't be weird. Just, just you get naked too and get in the hot tub. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm networking. So... So I, so I, you know, so I strip down naked and I'm in a hot tub in Beverly Hills with a star. And, uh, and you know, everything's still relatively normal enough. He's still just a dude, a bro, whatever. And then he goes, hey, I want to show you something. He goes, follow me. And he brings me into his house up to his bedroom. And uh, we get into his bedroom and, he ha and then he takes out a remote and he hits a button and black shades go down over all the windows. And then he puts on like hardcore gross porn on a big TV. He starts dildoing himself in the ass in front of me and he hands me a whip and he goes, whip me, whip me. And um, you know, I'm just trying to be polite. So I give him a few whips, you know, I begrudgingly give him a couple whips. And I don't like it, you know, I don't want to do this, so I'm hitting him a little harder, which is a little counterproductive, because he seems to like that. But, yeah, so I'm whipping this guy who's dildoing himself in the ass, and I'm thinking, like, I don't remember this part of La La Land. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, yeah, so then, uh, then he starts huffing something. He starts huffing something, and I go, what's that? And he goes, it's called poppers. And I go, I don't know what that is. He goes, you want to try it? I go, okay. So I take a tiny little whiff of whatever this is, and it floors me, completely floors me. And while I'm on the floor, he tries to get on top of me. While we're both still naked here, he tries to get on top of me. And it takes everything in me just to like get this fucking guy off of me. And I get up and I go, dude, you said you're not a gay dude trying to fuck me. You're like naked on top of me, you're touching my dick. Clearly, something's going on here. And he goes, hey, if touching dicks makes me gay, maybe I'm a little gay. <laughs> and the winner for best freak out <laughs> goes to dildoing with the stars. And uh, before it got too crazy like that, while he's dildoing himself, I'm in this guy's room, and I'm telling him, I go, just so you know, I'm only here because I'm going to talk about this on stage. And he goes, hey, man, as long as you don't say my name, I don't give a shit. The guy's name is Jonathan Bennett. And he, he was in the movie Mean Girls. Does anybody remember Mean Girls? He was the love interest, Aaron Samuels. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, which, like, you know, I guess is, like, a little flattering. <laughs> because in that movie, Lindsay Lohan's pursuing him. Rachel McAdams is pursuing him. No, he doesn't want them. He wants me. He, he doesn't want those starlets. He wants some reality TV booty. But, uh, yeah, so I got out of there after that. But uh, before that had happened too, before it was too crazy, when we're sitting in the hot tub, I go, cool, so Mean Girls, you're with Lindsay Lohan. I go, what's Lindsay Lohan like? And he goes, Lindsay Lohan is the worst person I've ever met in my life. Yeah, and this is coming from a sexual predator. So, that's pretty tough. I know, but I never picked up on it all the way up until the thing had happened, which was really a testament to his acting skills, I guess. Like, and even get this, so while we're in the hot tub too, he tells me a story about how he got molested in bunk beds when he was in a summer camp when he was like 12 years old. So he tells me this story, and within five minutes when we walk up to his bedroom, we stop at a guest room, and he goes, hey, by the way, uh, if you want to crash here for the night, I got these bunk beds here. And I go, you just told me a story about getting molested in bunk beds. 
and you want me to sleep over in bunk beds? And he goes, I don't see the connection. Um, again, great actor. So, so yeah, check him out in whatever Lifetime movie he's in. And, um, but yeah, a lot of my comic friends, uh, when I came back and I told this story, they all kind of said the same thing, which was like, dude, you should have just let him fuck you or something, you know? You'd probably be in movies or something. And uh, here's the thing. I wasn't broke yet. If he caught me three weeks later, you probably wouldn't be hearing this story. <laughs> You'd probably see me in a lifetime movie. Yeah. You were filming part of that. I saw that. You were filming some of that? Okay. Just a picture? Yeah. Okay, because I'm scared of that guy, so please don't put that out. I could, I could see him, which is so weird. He was like a host of a TV show called, like, Cake cupcake competition or whatever so like yeah wow where yeah where do you go from here we're still doing comedy don't worry i'll do i'll do some jokes now i know that's my last show in town i'm moving i'm going to london for a couple months and performing over there and then i'm moving to new york and i'm gonna try to be on snl that's the goal so thank you he clapped first you get the most money when i'm famous no, uh, yes, I, I think you can make it happen, you know. I think I have some stuff they'd be into. A couple impressions, you know. Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Pete Davidson. <laughs> they say you should never meet your heroes. Uh, you also shouldn't sleep with their wives. <laughs> okay, that's Pete Davidson. No. I, I, but Florida's better than New York in every regard. I don't want to live in New York. You just have to go there because that's where the shit is. But I, I know Florida is better than New York because you can criticize Florida. You can make fun of Florida and we don't give a shit because Florida is amazing. We don't give a shit. People make fun of Florida every fucking day. Florida man, ha, ha, ha. But if you make fun of New York, see how insecure these people get? New York sucks. New York doesn't suck. It's the greatest city in the world. It's the greatest city on earth. I, I love living 300 at a time stacked on top of each other in 400 square feet in a polluted, expensive city where everybody's angry and crowded and mean and my, my son got violated right over there and you know it's you know it's not that nice it's it's cold and rainy and that you don't see the sun ever because the buildings are so tall <laughs> but it's the greatest city on earth and then when they said people could work remotely they're like all right we're fucking out of here <laughs> yeah. yeah what happened to all that new york pride Anybody from New York in here who moved down during COVID? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, how funny was that? COVID affected everywhere but Florida. Because Ron DeSantis is just like an angry Quiznos manager or whatever. <laughs> We're staying open. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Well, DeSantis seems frustrated no matter what's happening. And it's like, I've never seen him happy. I feel like Ron DeSantis could come and be like, well, I guess it's over. <laughs> it's like, enjoy your life a little bit, dude. <laughs> Good old Ronnie D. That was fun, though, for a little bit. When Ron DeSantis would get mentioned in, like, national news. You'd see him on, like, international stories. They're, like, not even speaking English. And you're like, that's our guy. It's like an abusive relationship or something. You don't know him like we do. <laughs> Sure, he's, he paid to, you know, fly some immigrants to Martha's Vineyard. That was a gag. He was being silly. Yeah, elections are funny. Elections are just like old people influencer contests. You know, it's just... Oh, you got a gasp for that? <laughs> That's a good analogy? Thank you. Hell yeah. That really is. It's just, it's just a line of old people, one at a time, going, well, up. Actually, I'm cooler because America and titties. It's, yeah. Winning an election, you start with a very passionate, specific base, and then you just get more and more general the longer time goes on. That's how you win an election. You start with, like, I support women's right to an abortion. And everybody claps and they cheer. And then it becomes, I support women's rights. Everybody claps and cheers. And then it becomes, I support Americans' rights. Everybody claps, cheers. And then it becomes big titties and beer. And then everybody votes for that guy. And he wins. 
And then they dangle that thing they promised over us, so we'll do whatever they want. They go, hey, remember all that big titties and beer I was talking about? We go, yeah. And they go, well, the Arabs took it all. I go, what? I go, yeah, we got to go get them. Where are we going? I'll tell you on the way. Just get in. <laughs> it's just funny because it's like, they say, you know, voting's the only answer. Voting's the only answer. Voting's all we've ever done our whole lives. And it's still shit every single time. Because, like, sometimes even just to fuck with us, they'll give us exactly what we could ever want. And we still don't vote for it. Andrew Yang said if he was president, everyone would get $2,000 a month for the rest of their life. And people were like, oh, it's communism, it's bullshit, socialism, I don't believe in nonsense. And then they walk down to 7-Eleven and they buy a scratch-off called 2K a month for life. <laughs> it's different. It's not mathematically sound to give everybody $2,000 a month for life. Listen, if I'm going to trust the math skills of anyone, it's going to be someone named Andrew Yang. Remember Stop Asian Hate? Remember that? That lasted three days. What was that? I think it's, Asian people don't march. I think that's what it is. They're working. They're busy. They don't fall, fall for that shit. They're like, you want us to stop working? It's Christmas. We don't give a shit. We're working. <laughs> and uh, they likened Stop Asian Hate to Black Lives Matter. But Black Lives Matter was very serious with, like, say their names. You know, say their names, George Floyd, say their names, Breonna Taylor. But we didn't do that for Stop Asian Hate. And I think it's because they don't trust us to say their names right. Can you imagine a reporter on the news? Stop Asian Hate, say their names. Lei Zun Zhu. Lei Zun Just stop Asian Hate. Just stop Asian Hate. Okay, I lost you on that one. That's fine. I know. I wish I had better jokes, but I've been having supply chain issues. So I'm... <laughs> no, my, yeah, my jokes were looted by mostly peaceful protesters. But <laughs> they got my jokes. Yeah, the news, yeah, nonsense on the news. Nobody cares about, like, actual shit on the news. I feel like we need to start, like, reverse clickbaiting the news. You know, the headline on the internet should say, like, check out this picture of Kylie Jenner's pussy. And then you click it, and it's a list of all the children being held in cages at the border. And, oh, yeah, know these names, gotcha. Or it's like, you'll never believe Robert Downey Jr.'s hat. And then you click it, and it's the flight logs to Jeff Epstein's island. Like, yeah, remember those names. It's just weird, because news anchors don't sound like humans. And this is who we're like getting our information from. They don't talk like people. Every news anchor is like, yesterday I ate a sandwich. Hopefully soon I'll make love. Like, nobody sounds like this. We need, we need news anchors to sound like entertainment news people. That's how people would give a shit about what's going on. Can you imagine that? Putin fired rockets into the Ukraine. Talk about throwing some shade. <laughs> Ukraine wants Russia to pull out, but Russia said, no way, Jose. <laughs> and uh, have you guys been following the new season of war? Yes. And uh, well, war was canceled for a little bit during the pandemic, but now we're healthy enough to kill each other again. So that's nice. <laughs> you guys don't want to hear it. I'm still going for it. But to be I did change my profile picture on Facebook to Ukrainian flag. So it should be over any day now. Uh, I think that's about as much as we can do. Has anybody tried astral projecting to Putin? Try realigning his chakras? Anybody? What, you think his pineal gland is too calcified to realign his chakras? Is that what you're saying? That's what you're saying. I'm not saying that. You think Mercury's in retrograde? Is that it? Has anyone checked on Saturn? That might be the issue. I saw one woman wearing a t-shirt that said, Make spaghetti, not war. <laughs> Never thought of that. Never <laughs> thought of that angle. They're up in Russia. Oh, Vladimir, have you tried making spaghetti? 
Oh wow, it worked. Good. The momentum's to a screeching halt. That's what we like. Remember the dildo story? That was fun. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, my, my closer is I remind you of better times. <laughs> we can all reminisce on a good joke. <laughs> That's so stupid. Um, I know. I'm trying to think of the good ones. I'm going to pull the list out. I haven't looked at it yet. The good ones are all in here. I've just... You know, I try to hold off on looking at it till I have to, and, and now I have to. But, no, it's, it's good. Yeah, I was on the reality TV show. I am working on getting back on TV. I have some things in the pipeline. Uh, like, I've started smoking crack so I can get on intervention. Um, yeah, uh, my manager told me that show's canceled. So now I'm just addicted to crack, which is a little bit of a bummer. Now, you know what bummer is? Uh, sober addicts. Those are bummers. Because I always say stuff like, oh, yeah, I used to drink 25 beers a night, do five lines. I'm like, I wish I knew you then. Because now you just drink water and frown. That's, that's Every addict has that same overdose story, too. We've all heard it. Every addict. Oh, yeah, one night I was doing drugs. And I did more drugs than normal, and I ended up in the hospital. And the doctor told me, if I had one more hit, if I had one more sip, I wouldn't have made it. And I always think, wow. So I was this close not to hearing that story. Damn. Oof. I know. Anybody ever done dabs? You know what that is? Yeah, dabs are cool if you got like two days to kill. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. Any drug where you use a blowtorch is pretty hard to get your friends on board with. No, dude, it's cool. Come here. <laughs> is this Breaking Bad? Good lord. But um, I got kicked out of a glass shop recently because I went in and I said, I like your bongs. These are nice bongs. And they, goes, they go, bongs, weed paraphernalia. Weed's illegal. I go, I smoke weed. The guy goes, get out! And it's like, what kind of weird fantasy games are we playing in these places? You know, like I'm supposed to be like, yes, I'd like to smoke tobacco out of this six-foot glass dragon. That's what I'm going to do later. It's the legal thing to do. I remember my first day at a dispensary. Uh, the woman showed me all the strains. I don't know anything about the strains, so she's trying to help me out. She goes, well, what kind of weed do you normally buy? What kind of weed do you normally get? And I said, well, normally, I give a guy $80, and he throws a bag at me. That's my preferred method. It's weird. Yeah. It's nice that they call it medicine, but, like, I've never gotten to choose how much medicine I get. You know, they're never like, tell us when to stop pouring the Adderall. We weigh it by the gram. Yeah, fifth morphine shot's free. <laughs> no. Cocaine's the best drug, though. Anybody got some? <laughs> it's okay. I'm not a cop. I have to tell you if I am, according to movies. But, no, co cocaine's the best drug just because the come up and the come down is more severe than any drug I've ever had in my life. Because the come up on cocaine, you're like, oh, dude, we're starting a business, we're getting on Shark Tank, we're buying a penthouse. And then when I come down, you're like, I'm ugly, I'm going to kill myself, what am I doing? <laughs> but I've actually been seven years sober on cocaine. I loved it so much. Thank you. Hey, same guy who clapped for SNL. Hell yeah. You're beating everybody to the punch. You guys are on, well, you got a good t-shirt. What, what's the name of your boat? Do you, do you, do you, you, have, you have a boat? I need, oh, no. Oh, you look good. You, you look like a model from a Viagra commercial. <laughs> Speaking of which, when did erectile dysfunction commercials become so socially acceptable to just put on primetime TV? You know, shows a dude throw a football through a tire swing, then turn to the camera like, is your dick broken? Well, two billion men have already taken six trillion pills. 
You want to be the only pussy with a small dick, right? It's okay. It'll come to your house in discreet packaging that says not dick pills. Like, you know the UPS guy knows. Hey, Frankie, looks like 22B has a small package. I don't trust any pills on TV. Because every pill on TV has some weird alien name, you know? It's Latuda. It's Vivaxa. Plus, like, the next commercial is always like, did you take that pill from the last commercial? Well, you're gonna wanna sit down. Oh, fuck. Now you have macro dysplasia. Oh, fuck. Yikes. <laughs> cool. You ever get so drunk, you end up in a relationship for six years? I mean, anybody there? No, I do recognize most of you from Tinder. I used to... Uh, I met my last partner off one of those apps. What was it called? Venmo? Yeah. Good times. I don't know, some of them are tough. Hinge? Sometimes I look at Hinge and I'm like, I didn't know this many ugly people existed until I got them. Okay. Everybody bails on that one. Fine. I have so many more. No, the... A little, a little tip, a little hack. Uh, if their picture is a group picture, they're the ugly one. That's what I've learned. Mm -hmm. Also, a little bit of a controversial take here, but you can tell how large someone is based on their selfie height. Oh, yeah, skinny people, they're down here. Hi. Just one chin for me. But the larger someone gets... The higher that angle goes. Oh yeah, I saw one girl's profile picture. It was from Google Earth. Like, is that a chimney? What am I looking at? Also, if it's a really tightly zoomed shot, squished on the face, it's a red flag. You pull out, they're on a forklift. You're like, okay. <laughs> you know. Remember when you thought you had to date somebody before you had sex? Remember that, remember that innocent time in your youth where you're like, I'm going to be in love if I have sex. Now it's like, maybe if they fuck you real good, you'll take them to Applebee's. Like, let's... I meant to say, maybe if you fuck them real good, they'll take you to Applebee's. Because if I say I, then it's like, wait, I'm not the piece of shit in the joke. It's the, it's the made-up person. <laughs> Check out Air on tap. It's a good one. Okay, definitely the B side. While, while I'm in a hole, I might as well do, do some other ones that uh, are in the same general vicinity. Um, do you remember there was a moment where people were very upset at Barbie dolls? People said, when they go, we don't like Barbie dolls because they create unrealistic beauty standards. Yeah. You know what else they create? A lot of hot women. Are we really mad at a doll for being too pretty? I grew up with a Luke Skywalker action figure, careful, and that didn't ruin my life. I mean, sure, I tried to sleep with my sister a couple times, but <laughs> that... Hell yeah, Star Wars joke. It's not bad to want to be hot. Life is better if you look good. That's just a fact. Do you know how many beautiful women I've met who have never driven on the highway before? <laughs> One time I was on a date, a girl calls me. She goes, hey, I'm five blocks away. Can you come parallel park my car? I mean, yeah, of course I do it because, you know, I'm trying to fuck. But, like, you know, we're enabling these people. I'm convinced that the hottest woman in the world is on a breathing machine, just being wheeled around from room to room. She, she doesn't even need to breathe, dude. She's fucking... I don't know. I just feel bad if you do too much to try to look pretty. Like, you know, people put themselves through a lot. High heels, banks, perfume, invasive surgeries, laser therapy. I don't feel good unless lasers shoot at me. I don't know. It seems excessive. You don't need to do that. It makes me look good. I like the way I look. Okay, 
I like the way I look wearing a suit of armor. But I don't wear that out on dates. Because then I ask you, well, how close are we parking to the restaurant? Because the suit of armor is heavy. And is it cobblestone? You have to hold my hand. Like, <laughs> all right, I'll get out of that area. All right. You're still with, I'm not ending anytime soon, so. <laughs> how, long, how long have I been up, John? Actually, don't even tell me. It'll just, spo it'll spoil it. You ever get advice? Is somebody leaving? Are you leaving? Okay, you just, okay, perfect. No, that's good. This is the lull anyway. This is, uh, this is the, it's like a live intermission. I still, you guys can relax and I'll do the loungy stuff. You, know? you ever laugh so hard you farted? Or, just, you know, there's the cheap ones. You, know? you, ever, uh, you ever get advice from people doing worse than you? You ever have that happen? People are like, oh, dude, this is how you got to eat. This is how you got to invest your money. It's like, dude, you're calling me from prison. Like, you get out, and then we'll talk about all that other stuff. But yeah, things are going pretty good for me. Uh, you might have seen my stuff on Storage Wars. That was exciting. Yeah, I was just sitting at home like, what the fuck? There's my six dirt bikes. How did I... How do people forget about this shit? On Storage War shows? Oh darn, my golden pool table. Whoops. Just slipped my mind. The Ferrari in the shipping container? Just, I've been busy. <laughs> no. But yeah, things are going good for me. Uh, I was actually written up in the newspaper the other day. That was exciting. You guys might have seen it. Drunk driver kills four at birthday party. Uh, This is a real statistic. Did you know that 30% of car accidents involve alcohol? Yeah, and I think the more important statistic there is that 70% don't. So drink up. Yeah, statistically it's the safest thing you can do. And I don't, I don't know if you guys know this as well, this is true, in most fatal car crashes, the drunk person is the only one to survive. Yeah, and that's because alcohol relaxes your body, so when you crash, you're less likely to tense up all your muscles, tear everything. Yeah, I chug a beer before I get in a car. Oh, yeah. People are like, what are you doing? I'm like, putting on armor. I'm trying to make it home. No, alcohol is wonderful. Alcohol is probably the only reason to be alive. It's just, it's just your drunk friends who cause the problems, you know? You ever try to tell somebody they're too drunk? You tell somebody they're too drunk, they'll spend the rest of the night trying to prove to you they're not drunk by doing shit they'd never do sober. Mm -hmm. And if I was drunk, could I do a backflip? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Next day, nobody's ever been like, yeah, I mean, I thought Dave was kind of drunk. But once he did that backflip, I knew he was good to drive. Um, yeah, what is it about alcohol that makes us want a drunk text, drunk dial, you know? I miss you. Let's make it work. Like, my question is, I wonder how far back in humanity this behavior goes. You know, like a hundred years ago where dudes sitting around fucked up, like... Oh, fuck yeah, I should be here in two weeks. <laughs> Guys get drunk and send a carrier pigeon to their own castle. Like, I wonder if it goes as far back as message runners. You know, just some kid shows up winded to a city. Like, ah, I come bearing a message from the Duke of Cunningham to the Duchess of Notting Hill. Thy message reads. You up? Yes, <laughs> yes tell him I'll be there in nine moons. Okay. I like the hurricanes. <laughs> Hard transition. I, I like the hurricanes in, in Florida just because it feels like that's the only time I get to live my life normally without being judged. You know, because people are like, what are you doing? And I'm like, drinking and getting high. And they're like, oh, because of the hurricane? I'm like, yeah, because of the hurricane. Like, 
And you can tell how well you're doing in life based on how quickly your power comes back on. I've noticed that as well. Same day, one day, doing pretty good. Two, three days, not as good. I haven't had power now for six years. Probably more on me. But yeah, Ian was supposed to hit us directly. Remember that? Ian was supposed to hit us directly, but the day before, it, it, it shifted south and hit lower Florida. And I think that's because everybody knows that God would never hurt Tom Brady. Uh, keep our boys safe. I don't know. He won us the Super Bowl that one year. That was exciting. At 44 years old. Oldest quarterback to ever win the Super Bowl. Bruce Arians, 68 years old. Oldest head coach to ever win the Super Bowl. Yeah, welcome to Grandpa Bay, where old guys can make it. It was the first Super Bowl won at home. Of course it was at home. If they wander too far, their bracelet rings. <laughs> Come back, Grandpa. I'm from Washington, D.C. That's where I grew up. And our football team, well, it was the Redskins. But we got canceled. And uh, we had a gender reveal party. And we're now the, the Washington Commanders. Which is nice. And um, I feel like the Commanders are the people who killed the Redskins. So, seems like a lateral move. I don't really understand that one. Yeah. Our basketball team in DC is the, uh, the Washington Wizards. Yeah, it used to be the Bullets, but also got canceled because gun crime was so high in the city that they figured, change the name of the basketball team, everything will work itself out. And uh, it did, no more gun crime, but there's been a huge rise in wizardry. <laughs> Which has been very scary. This dude's on the corner with robes and amulets. Like, give me your money, I'll turn you into a frog, bitch. <laughs> Bippity boppity, bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned guns. Um, did you know there's a website called Arms List? And that's Craigslist, but only for guns. Yeah, so basically you're just setting up an appointment to get robbed. <laughs> Yeah, I'll bring $500. You bring the gun. Sounds good. It's the end of the bridge at 2 a.m. What, you guys have guns on you? Prove it. Point it at me, pussies. Let's see it. No, we need guns. We need guns for self-defense. And people go, well, why do you need a sniper rifle for self-defense? What if somebody's trying to stab me from 400 yards away. You know, I gotta have my thing. Why do I need a sawed off shotgun? What if I'm getting attacked by a swarm of bees? Why do I need a fully automatic assault rifle that fires 32 rounds a second? What if I'm getting attacked by 32 people every second? How many people are in here right now? Like one and a half seconds? That's scary to think that I only have one and a half seconds to kill all of you. But that's the world we live in. And uh, there's, there's more parts of that, but I'm not gonna do it because I'm gonna make an executive decision. I'm not one of those psychopath comics who will hear a crowd, give them nothing, and still go without addressing it. I'm in the room with all of you. I'm, I feel it. I'm not going to pretend that. <laughs> Hold on. No, per okay. I've been saving the good ones. You guys are like, why would you dare do that? <laughs> because I needed to prove that you really liked me. Before I... If you want me to open up, I need to know that you'll be with me through the bad times. And you're like, this isn't a marriage. This is a comedy show. Well, you didn't pay anything. So... <laughs> You guys are like, don't remind me. You guys are like, I still want my money back. How dare you? Hypothetical voice in my head. I'm going to transfer my rage to all of you. That's, a, that's something you want to hear a, a stand-up comedian say. Okay, you're still here. Um, I got a massage the other day. That was exciting. Yeah, thank you. And uh, at the end of the massage, the lady, she goes, would you like me to? 
She did this motion. Yeah. And I was like, we're at a kiosk in the mall. <laughs> and she's like, I'll put a blanket over you. I'm like, all right, go nuts. Okay. No. But my question is, are you allowed to masturbate in your car if you live in it? Because I feel like, yeah, I feel like technically you can be like, you know, your honor, this is my place of residency. I have nowhere else to go. And they're like, yeah, but did you need to have the top down? I just wanted a breeze. They're like, you're at the Wendy's drive-thru. The cartoon Wendy's, beautiful. <laughs> and experience, <laughs> nice, I got a Jesus Christ, hell yeah. I'm, I'm doing bingo up here. Uh, it's one of my boxes. But um, uh, an experience that I do wish everyone can experience at some point in their life. I, I would like to manifest for everyone in this room to get roadhead in a convertible with the top down. Everyone in here deserves that experience. You shook your head. I'm not sure why. Are you not a fan of conolingus? What's up? Or were you just sh shaking your head at the idea? Was that too much? Oh, okay. We struck a chord. Um, but yeah, no. Road had it with the top down. Very cool thing. Everybody should experience it. Uh, one time I was driving a convertible with somebody and she was interested in doing that. I'm like, yeah, let's do that. And she goes, oh, but like, you know, wouldn't people see me because the top's down? And I'm like, no, because like the door height is like this high. So like we were even with people, they're not going to see in. Uh, and then a bus pulled up. And yeah... But she didn't know. It's fine. <laughs> you ever have sex on the beach? At Clearwater Beach or whatever the closest one is? Um, yeah, sex on the beach is not as romantic as all those book covers make it look. You know? Because I don't know if you guys know this about the beach, but uh, sand. Yeah. Not the best lubricant. And uh, it doesn't matter how hard you stretch that fitted bed sheet. It's getting in there. Yeah, and also, you're having sex in public, too. So there's an added layer of paranoia, you know? Uh, we were on the beach, and uh, there was a lighthouse at the end of the beach. So just every three seconds, I thought somebody with a flashlight was coming up to me. Just, whoa! Ah! But worst part about beach sex, higher risk of crabs. So, I was on a popsicle stick. Thank you. You ever fuck in the ocean? That's exciting. So there's a whole nother level of fear in that. It's, you know, you don't know what's under there. I'm worried that I'm gonna get an STD that's like not even human, you know? Fuck around and catch merm AIDS. <laughs> Chick gets octopussy. Oh, fuck. I got star dick. It looks like a star now. I don't know. Also, what's up with these old guys on the beach who don't think the sun applies to them? Have you seen these balls of redness? These little fat, bald guys who are just red as hell on the beach? What the fuck is with... Back in my day, the sun didn't affect me. Well, back in your day, there was an ozone layer. That doesn't exist anymore. I like the metal detector guys, too. You guys out of here? Are you taking a shit? What's up? All right. I love you. Damn it. We were DMing all night. We were supposed to fuck after the show. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. The metal detector guy on the beach is fun too. Because, you know, obviously they didn't find anybody. My dream is that a metal detector guy on the beach finds the remains of a dead guy with a metal detector. That, I think... Oh, shit. It's me from the past. No one else is allowed to leave. <laughs> I'm deciding now. I've been riding those e-scooters around town. You know, because I'm ready to die. And I think the fun in those isn't even riding them as much as it's just being able to leave them wherever the fuck you want. You know, we all get to feel like rich children. Just, yep, middle of the crosswalk, I'm done. I want sushi now. I don't care. <laughs> They're getting brave, though. I saw them merge onto the highway. Like, what the fuck? Um, I know, they're just scattered everywhere. 
Yeah, e-scooters are like the herpes of cities. They're just fucking... But it is fun just to see children chuck them into a river or whatever. <laughs> yeah, fuck the power. Who's the power? I don't know. Whoever owns lime. <laughs> fuck those people. But no, I drove a car here tonight. Bragging, hold your applause. Um, yeah, I drove a car here. And I like cars, but I don't know anything about cars. Which is awkward anytime I gotta talk to one of those, uh, what are they called? Men, you know? <laughs> They'll be like, what do you got under the hood? I'm like, engine. Yeah. Right pedal goes forward. Left one doesn't. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ladies, you ever fuck a guy because his car's really loud? Then why are they still doing it? Who are, who are these guys? It's, I need the pipe straight and big, really loud, because my daddy hit me when I was in high school, so if it's quiet, I think. <laughs> But, um, I know I have more cards. I don't even know. What am I doing? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. This feels a little bit like class on Friday, and you guys are waiting for the bell to ring. <laughs> you guys are looking at the clock like, yeah, yeah. Remember the homework. Summer break's coming up, but you still gotta read. You guys are enjoying this, right? <laughs> Oh, hell yeah, all right. Oh, thank you. Oh, you guys fucked up now. <laughs> you guys just charged me up for another hour and a half. Beautiful. Anyway. Fuck yeah, thank you. Hell yeah. Now, yeah, I, I drove over here tonight. Get you stuck in traffic a little bit. When you're stuck in traffic, that's when you realize just how bad of a person you are inside. Because you'll see a sign or something like, Accident ahead, expect delays. And your first thought is like, oh shit, I hope nobody's hurt. And then five minutes goes by, and it turns into, some of them are gonna be fucking dead for me to still be here. I'm hungry. I got shit to do. Basketball wives ain't gonna watch itself. Like, you know. One of my favorite billboards, though, is the, you guys ever seen the one? The ER wait time at Tampa General is five minutes. And it's like, who is this for? Like, if you're going to the emergency room, it's an emergency. You don't really have time to be shopping around for a better deal. I mean, in the back of the ambulance, like, oh my God, it's so much blood, fuck! Wait, did that say 16 minutes? No, we're going to St. Joseph's. I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. I think my favorite billboard though is the Chick-fil-A billboards. They've got the cows holding signs, say, eat more chicken, and it's all misspelled and shit. I love these, because we're supposed to look up at these and be like, oh, honey, look, the cow's will to live has become so strong that they've learned our language and typography in an attempt to beg us not to kill less of them, but to kill more of another species in hopes we're too full to eat them. Isn't that cute? It's the most brutal ad campaign I've ever seen. That's like the equivalent of a bunch of gypsies in Nazi Germany holding signs that say, kill more Jews. The J's backwards. Okay, I could feel some buttholes tighten up on that one. Uh, if it makes you feel any better, I'm allowed to make that joke. I'm German. So it's actually all right. I'm actually half Jewish, which was cool growing up half Jewish, because what we'd do is we'd switch off what we celebrated every year. You know, like one year we'd celebrate Christmas, and then the next year we'd save all our money for the next Christmas. It was pretty solid. Yeah. All right, my opener's asleep, beautiful. <laughs> I catch you at the one second you're leaning over really far. Oh, you're laughing? Oh, hell yeah, thank you. I know, I'm so insecure. <laughs> you, guys, you guys need to like me every three seconds, or I forget about the previous hour. <laughs> I know, why are we like this? I don't know. I know. I grew out my hair for the same reason anybody does. Depression. And if I cry into it, it gets stronger. 
No, I, I grew out my hair actually for a, a movie role. Yeah. I, uh, I haven't written the movie yet, but I, I want to be, be ready. Here's a fun one you guys can try. Next time you go to the bathroom, when you knock on the door, and the person inside goes, Someone's in here! Shout, I know! And keep trying to get in. You know, literally scare the shit out of somebody. That's fun to do. You know, I want to do good things. Like, for example, I want to open up an animal shelter for dogs with broken legs and call it Bitches Be Trippin'. I think that's... I've been telling that joke for 15 years. I don't want, I don't want to do it. But you guys laugh. So I, I do it again. I also want to open up a theme park for lesbians and call it Butch Gardens. I think that's a nice idea. Yeah. And I want to make a, a gay version of Tyler Perry's Meet the Browns and call it Brown the Meats. Yeah. I know. I should have stopped at Bitches Be Tripping. Okay. No, you guys are very nice. Let me, let me make sure my thing is still recording. I'm recording this. <laughs> I know. Oh, wow. Okay. Don't worry about that. <laughs> this this is my my CISO special. <clears throat> that was a company that went out of business. Jokes are funnier when I explain them. <laughs> I've been told that never. Wait a minute. I like uh, I like the trend of people paying for medical bills with GoFundMe, like surgeries and shit. I need GoFundMe so I can pay my surgery, because that's an interesting deal. Because then it's like. If the guy doesn't get the money, and it's like, the person dies, people go, what happened to Kevin? How did he die? Oh, well, not enough people cared if he lived. I know, that's too harsh. I should have had a better punchline. I shouldn't have let you in on any of this. I should have just stuck with my jokes. And then, um, okay, I'll do the good ones. Fine. <laughs> Only because you're forcing me to. Oh man, and this is the one I'm saying after saying good ones. I, I called a psychic the other day, said I want to come in and get a reading. She said, what time? I was like, bad start. No. I'm actually friends with a chick who's a social medium. Yeah, she can talk to deleted Twitter accounts. It's very cool. No. I've, I do shows with psychics sometimes because I'm successful. And, and that's just part of it. But no, I, I did a show with a psychic one time, and at the end she took questions from the crowd. And um, one of the questions from the audience, they said, do you ever get messages from babies on the other side? And she went, yes, I do get messages from babies on the other side. And it's like, what are those messages like? You know, where she's just talking to the crowd like, okay, I'm getting a wham. This is a... I'm getting a goo goo gaga. Does that? I know. The psychic mediums, such general questions. Okay, somebody in here breathes. Is this correct? I'm being told that someone has parents. Is this? No. But I believe in Jesus. You guys believe it? Isn't it funny that Jesus seems to be like the only guy from the Middle East we don't have a problem with? <laughs> How, how did this happen? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, spoiler alert, you know, he wasn't white or whatever in the books. and movies. The guy's from the Middle East. The guy's Israeli. If there was ever a second coming, people wouldn't even know. Just some brown guy in sandals walks up to you on the sidewalk like, Burukata, Aronai, Moksha, get the fuck away from me, homeless man. <laughs> like, Jesus has probably come back 50 times, but he doesn't speak English, so we just keep killing him. <laughs> and here's the thing. I feel like Jesus died for our sins when there wasn't that much to live for anyway. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is if he came back, I don't think he'd do it again. We'd be like, Jesus, we need you to die for our sins. He'd be like, fuck that, I got an Apple Watch. I'm not <laughs> dying for you guys. Yeah, pretty good deal. One guy dies, we all get into heaven. 
sweet deal. <laughs> like, Jesus was like the first club promoter, pretty much. <laughs> Just say my name up there, my dad will let you in. Still up there. No apples, though, no apples. <laughs> yeah, one guy died. I like to think about the crown of thorns story. That just sticks out to me a little bit. Just because a crown of thorns seems like a lot of work to go through for like an ironic gag. You know, they're like, oh really, king of the Jews, huh? Hey Frankie, make him a crown out of thorns, that'll show him. And Frankie's like, I've never made a crown out of thorns before. And they're like, well, you're the only art major, you're gonna do it. So this guy made a crown out of thorns and you think he was proud of it? You know, you think they're kicking Jesus through the streets, it falls off his head. He's like, hey man, I worked hard on that. Don't. Speaking of Jesus, uh, I think I figured out why the church is against abortion. Because if the baby's dead, the pastor can't fuck it. Oh, yeah, they stopped doing it. I'll stop talking about it. I didn't make up anything for that joke. I know, abortion. Roe v. Wade. Damn. I don't know who won. I just hope next they fight Jake Paul. I think that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, we are crazy. Huh? <laughs> one, uh, one of the religions believes that in heaven you get 72 virgins. You ever heard that before? 72 virgins. That's just such a specific number. 72 virgins. Like 71 virgins, you're like, I wish it was one more. And 73 virgins, you're like, they're always talking. <laughs> but 72, perfect. All right, cool. All right, has everybody stopped laughing? Good. I don't... <laughs> One time, you ever meet somebody at a bar who wants to tell you everything about their life within the first 30 seconds of meeting them? I was at a place called Pegasus Lounge. If that helps anybody. Oh, yeah. One of the worst places on earth. But uh, there's a guy sitting at the bar, and he goes, I used to be in prison for smoking crack. I'm a cross-dresser. And when a... Uh, holy shit. Look, how you doing? Hey, welcome to the show. I was just telling a story about you. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, well, you want to come up here? No. No? Okay. Well, don't put a curse on me. <laughs> well, hell yeah. Keep it going for the most golden girl. Hell yeah. I can't hear you. You can't hear me. You're not missing anything. <laughs> well, how did you know I was talking to you then? Ah, you son of a gun. This is, I know. Right on time. Nothing, yeah. Oh, you have cookies? No. Oh, what is that? What are you showing me? Queen Anne. Oh, cherries. I'm okay. I don't want it. But thank you. I know. That's the first time I've ever denied a woman's cherry before. <laughs> hey! All right. Flat, yeah, give the crowd a bow. Right. You're great. What resort hotel in Miami did you come from? Oh, shit. She's, she's got the vibe of, like, the table dancer in the club. She's, like, going around the room ready to fucking tear shit up. Oh, okay. yeah. This is actually an episode of Undercover Boss. And she, she... Nothing. I'm saying you're a superstar. We're blessed to have Lady Gaga's mom here. This is, oh, yeah. And she's dancing a little bit. This is great. Yeah, come. You want to come grind on me? What's up? What are you talking about? I know. What am I talking about? I'm doing stand-up comedy, and you just happen to walk in, and you look amazing. I love your bucket hat. Thank you. You look like the first drug dealer. <laughs> yeah, no, you're great. I fucking love you. Do I want some fentanyl? I'm surprised you know what fentanyl is. Hell yeah. This is great. I know. I don't even, I'm not even sure if she exists. This might, this might be years of acid. Come back to haunt me. Here, I'll give you a high five. Hell yeah. Look at all these bracelets too. God damn. You go on Antiques Roadshow and buy the whole place out. And there she goes, folks. Wow. Hell yeah. Thank you. What the fuck? 
Oh, it was crazy. Does anybody know her? Does anybody know who that was? I know, I, I'm, I'm not convinced that, that 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 was a real person. Like, I feel like, did she float around the room? That was amazing. She did look like every super rich woman in a movie. What are you pointing, dude, Josh? What? She left her shit? Oh, well, hopefully she's coming back. I know. Fuck. It's like, what could it? And that's the flattest purse I've ever seen in my life. There's nothing in there. There's a fucking business card from Bialystok and Bloom. Producers. Hey, hey. No, hell yeah. A, carrying a box of cherries around. That's how she gets them in the van. Wow, good for her. Well, well thank God for that. I was fucking lacking for a minute there, but... <laughs> and I'm so curious about her now, too. I, I miss her. <laughs> that was perfect. She fucking nailed it. You say, what, is she coming back? You say, yeah, you think she'll... Yeah, she'll, she'll come back. I mean, you can't leave your fucking cherries and knock on her head. <laughs> Sounds great. Do you want some fentanyl, she said. Sounds great. I like to think about how we're going to be the first generation of tech-savvy old people. You know? It's coming with us. Just shit my pants, tweet. Like, we're going to have the same problems, but for different reasons. You know? Like, how'd you get arthritis, Grandpa? Guitar hero. <laughs> Took me years to be Dragon Force on Expert, but I did it. Um, I know. I need her so bad. <laughs> My baby girl. I know. Tell me about it. Let's get her back, guys. It's like a romantic movie. She nailed it. She acted like she couldn't hear what I was saying. Huh? What? I hear it. Yeah, Sloan, can you go tell her I need her? She was in Thinner. She was in what? The movie Thinner. What's the movie Thinner? <laughs> I'm sure that's very funny. No, the old lady, the Indian lady, the... you didn't see it. I didn't see it. She told us one night that she used to be a backup dancer for Prince. She used to be a backup dancer That's with Prince? I think her shirt had prints on it. Yeah. Holy shit. She said she broke her leg jet skiing in Lake Havasu. Broke her leg jet skiing. She's the coolest fucking... Damn, we can all aspire to be that lady. Damn. But yeah, I was telling a, a story about meeting people and they tell you everything within the first 30 seconds. <laughs> everything I say is meaningless now. <laughs> It's never going to live up to it. Rose. It seems like it would be her name. Old people, yeah, most old people are just named after, like, flowers. It's Violet. It's Trudy. I don't know. But yeah, I meet a guy at a bar, and he goes, I was in prison for smoking crack. I used to be a cross-dresser. And when I was a little boy, I walked in on my dad banging my dog. Yeah. He put the cock in Cocker Spaniel. But, so I go, I go, that's terrible. That's awful. That's disgusting. And he goes, no, it was actually a good thing because my dad stopped beating me because he knew I'd tell my mom that he fucked the dog. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is the Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> he traded his physical trauma for mental trauma, which could uh, maybe is better. But yeah, what a weird deal. And yeah, I like that phrase too, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Because like, you know what else works in mysterious ways? Everything. Like, that doesn't really... And especially if you're trying to like get people to join a religion, that doesn't really help the pitch, you know? It's like, well, you're not going to understand anything he does. But that's just what makes him so special, you know? Yeah, could you get her for me? <laughs> That would really help me out. No, I, I, I should leave soon. I can feel it too. <laughs> I believe in ghosts. But it seems like ghosts never do anything anymore. Ghosts don't do any cool shit, you know? Every ghost story now is like, yeah, every night at 3 a.m., the ghost opens our closet door a few inches. And it's like, is that what ghosts are doing with people? 
in the afterlife just fucking with people vaguely. You know, I miss I miss the good old days when ghosts used to do cool stuff like impregnate virgins. <laughs> it's a book reference. I know, tough deal for Joseph, huh? Cucked by an angel. Rough. I don't think Jesus could work again. Nobody would believe this story. We're just too skeptical, this modern day and age, you know? People would be like, you know, Jesus descended from the heavens right in front of me. And people would still be like, fake, gay, I see the wires, not real. <laughs> Chris Angel did it, not, not special. Yeah, and the story too, that would be a tough one these days. Virgin birth. She gave birth and she's a virgin. She had a baby, she's never had sex before. People would be like, oh, honey, were you at a Bill Cosby show? <laughs> I know, he's on tour. He's, he's opening me later. <laughs> Terrible. I know, that saved it. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I, no way. Said something about sports. Um, I like that with football, it's like the ball is very important and they always want to keep the ball. So, you know, when the ball is in play, protect the ball, love the ball, never drop the ball. But the second they cross that end zone line, they're like, yo, fuck this ball, kicking it and shit. Ball's like, you've changed, man. You used to care about me. And some people think that teachers should get paid as much as athletes, you know? But like, I don't know, a teacher's never been passing back math tests and torn her ACL. There's a little bit of a difference. Plus there's benefits with teachers too, you know? Like they get to sleep with kids. That's pretty. <laughs> there's gonna be a yard sale after this. <laughs> I'm selling all my worldly possessions. But, I know, I'm, okay. What's the, what's the big closer? No, none of these are gonna, okay. Oh, there's so much I skipped. You guys don't like hearing that. Ever... So with that new train stuff that's happened recently, yeah, the, uh, I know, the show is flowing like a river in Palestine. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so based on what's been happening with trains recently, did you know that there's actually a new definition for running a train on a woman? Yeah, instead of like a gangbang, now it's when you're fucking a girl, you fall off and fart. And that's... The worst part is that's not even my joke. That's Clark Brooks' joke. But I liked it so much, I said, can I do it? I'll do it justice for sure. There's no way that'll miss. You're gonna see that on TikTok tomorrow. I'm pumping crowd noise in. I'm gonna put a caption that says, standing ovation. Are there any criminals in here? Has anybody, yeah? Hell yeah, let's talk to you guys. I would have guessed him, but you raised him. No. That guy looks like he chops wood with his shirt off. <laughs> you look like the, the Witcher. Um, you look at, what's the guy in uh, Lord of the Rings with the axe? Gimli. Gimli. Yeah, thank you. Hell yeah. No. Um, okay, so what did you have to go to court for, if you don't mind sharing? Domestic abuse. Domestic abuse. Did you hit, did you beat, did, was it him? No. Oh. 20 years ago. Okay. You, you beat somebody up? Yeah, I caught my ex-boyfriend making out, and I beat him up, and then the bitch was making out with all the cops, and I got arrested. Good for you. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. That's the best reason to go to court. Yeah. What did they give you, a high five when you went to court? <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Damn, domestic. Well, was it worth it to, you know, to oh, beat yeah, him? I got a lawyer, got dropped. I can get him. Oh, nice. I got Good. a clean record now. Okay. Well, you, you hear that, significant other? We're on our first date. You're on your first date? <laughs> Oh, fuck yeah. That's right. Hell yeah. Keep it going for their last date. <laughs> oh, man. That's beautiful. Um, you, you look like somebody from Orange County Chopper. <laughs> but, okay, so you went to court for domestic abuse. You, you've never been to court, buddy? No. Good for you. I like liars. And, no, 
Uh, uh, hell yeah. Okay, so no no real uh, trouble? No real punishment? No, but I paid my way out of it. Good for you. Hell yeah. Oh, uh, such a beautiful white story. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking great. Yeah, that's well, what's the point of money if you don't use it to beat up ex-boyfriends? I hear you. So, okay, first date. Uh, where'd you guys meet? How do you, would you mind telling me how you guys connected? Oh, Tinder? Since you won't, Tinder? You won't oh. like right on me. Oh, what are you talking about? I totally did whatever. Um, <laughs> what, uh, what was each other's bio? What was his bio? I don't even know. You don't even know. Do you remember her bio? No. You guys just both have blindfolds on and you just... What the fuck? You came to see me? Aw, what's my name? Funny guy, there we go. That's right, he came to see Funny Guy. That's me. The sequel to Funny Girl by Barbara Streisand. Hell yeah, I know that movie. Should be impressed. I'm a, I'm a Siegfried boy. Is that the guy? There wasn't Siegfried, what was the name of the thing? It was a Z. Do you remember? It was the theater company from Funny Girl. Does anybody remember? This is important. This is Siegfried Folly. So I was right with Siegfried. You fucking doubters. You don't even know what I'm talking about. But yeah, okay, hell yeah. You guys met on Tinder. This is your first date. You're a psycho? No. No, not anymore. You guys think you'll fuck tonight? She's nodding her head, yes. You're not open. There you go. Hell yeah. Well, good for you guys. I hope you guys, you know, go on a, a few more dates, maybe. I don't know. You drove like an hour and a half to come see you tonight. Really? Oh, you actually came for me? Aw. I love that you came for me. That's, uh, an hour and a half, where'd you come from? Well, it wasn't that far, Ruskin. It wasn't that far, Ruskin? Okay. So you, you actually know me? No. Oh. Did you know this was happening? He knew. Wait, so you knew. You knew. How did you know it was happening? Internet. Okay. Hell yeah. You see something on the internet, you're like, I'll drive an hour and a half for that. Have you seen me before on anything? Or? Yeah, I live in Largo, yeah. Okay, you live in Largo? What have you, where have you seen me before? Here. Other places. Okay. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming out. Yeah, you're a funny guy. Thank you so much. Well, in New York. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks. That's nice. Where's that lady? I know. I'm like, where's my baby doll? No. Okay. You know, I feel like usually comics have like a big closer, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I brought up the, the law thing because uh, if you've never been to court before... Court is just a game you gotta play. When you get caught fucking up, more money you have, better shot you have at winning. If you don't think court is a game, look at the terminology that they use. Two teams sit on a bench and practice in a court in an attempt to win a trial. If you don't wanna play, you can plead no contest. They call it a fucking contest. How much more obvious can it get? A verdict will be reached by a jury of your peers. What is a fucking game show? Tonight on Law, 12 strangers will decide whether one man will escape in an hour or get raped in the shower. Only on TBS. I was really hoping I could have left after that one. Has a comedian ever just ended a set to nothing? We could make history tonight. No. Yeah, you talked about being privileged. Where I can... Uh, yeah, having money in court. You ever call somebody privileged? It's like the N-word to white boys. You, can, you call somebody privileged, they're like, hey, my dad worked hard, so I don't have to. You're like, what was, what was that other part? My question is, where did white privilege begin? Because we talk about white privilege all the time. When did white privilege truly begin? Because it's like, white people didn't invent all these terrible things. Guns were created by Chinese people. Um, what's the genocide was created by people in the Middle East. Uh, slavery was created by the Greeks. 
And you might go, well, Greeks are white people. Yeah, not to us. Like, we didn't invent these terrible things. We're just better at it. That's really all it is. And uh, one theory I've heard is because uh, white people, blonde hair, blue eyes, those are the most recessive genes. But aliens just really like the way we look, so they bred us the most. So we're the weakest beings ever, which is why we're overcompensating by being evil. So, And, you know, <laughs> you know, usually jokes have punchlines and are funny, but not that one. <laughs> I like to think about the pyramids, though. Conspiracies with the pyramids. What do you guys think? You think aliens made the pyramids? Okay. What's the other option? What do you guys, who do you think made the pyramids? Slaves? What kind of slaves? Greek. <laughs> yeah, Jewish slaves. That's the other thought. The people say Jewish slaves built the pyramids. And they did. And then Moses opened the sea. So we believe in magic, but not aliens. That's about it, huh? <laughs> aliens are crazy, but yes, an old man put a staff into the beach, and then the sea opened up. I believe that part. That part happened. <laughs> I know. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what happened to me? Okay, last one. <laughs> it's got to be a really good one if I'm done at my last one. You ever take a shit so big your dick gets hard? Wait a minute. I know, I hate to get political. <laughs> You ever pee with the seat down and pretend you're playing Operation? Ah, <laughs> oh, whoops. Sorry, Wendy's. Also, that's not a joke for men. That's a joke for anybody with a penis. So, please don't gender assign my jokes. That'd be nice. What about, uh, you ever, what about these psychopaths who pee directly into the water? It's like, what are you trying to wake the neighbors? What are you doing? Pee on the side like a normal person. So I'm trying to prove a point. That's not the last one. There's no way. I know. I should have really. I should have. Well, it's my last show. That was the whole. That's the whole gimmick. That's the whole trick. It's your last show. You can waste a lot of people's time. Now, um. Anybody go to a lightning game this year? Anybody go to lightning games? All right, clapping for the sake of participation. Um, it's cool, if you, if you go to a lightning game, you might notice that there's, uh, there's Tesla coils that hang from the ceiling that go off every time we score. And um, I don't know, that just seems like to belittle this invention a little bit. Like you think when Nikola Tesla made this amazing lightning shooting device, you thought he ever thought it'd be hanging upside down in Tampa just to go off every time a hockey team scored, you know? Like, everything we create, we, we seem to just do the dumbest shit with it. Like, when Alexander Graham Bell made the phone, you think he had any idea how many people would be using it to take pictures of their dicks? I was like, what? I wanted you guys to talk. Like, whatever we invent, we just do the dumbest shit with it. We've created a box that shoots microwaves of radiation that excite the atoms. Let's put a cup of noodles in there. Let's see what happens there. We've created a, a condensed beam of light, a laser, which can be seen from hundreds of yards away at any spot. Look, it's on his nuts. How about that? Uh -huh. We've created a world wide web of digital information that can be accessed from anywhere in the world. We put the dick pics from the phone on it. Go look at it. No, I don't need that. I had a uh, microwave wings the other day from TGI Fridays. On the box of the microwave wings, the instructions were step one, microwave on high for two minutes. Step two, flip wings over, microwave on high for another two minutes. And in parentheses, in all caps, it said, you're almost there. Yeah, and I feel like if you need words of encouragement to finish a microwave meal, like, you should just call it, you know? Like, it's... <laughs> The world's not for you. I don't know. There's uh, one, of the, one of the frozen brands of food, micro uh, banquet meals. Have you seen it? Banquet meals in the frozen food aisle. 
Every, every box is 66 cents, and the food is so bad, they can't even make it look good on the box. You know, even with all the Photoshop in the world, they're like, I'm sorry, the Salisbury rat tail is always going to look like dog throw up. The banquet's ruined. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a commercial for collagen pajamas. You ever see that? Collagen pajamas. For all those people who want to get a degree, but don't want to go through the trouble of putting clothes on. You know, that doesn't exactly look too ambitious on a resume. Oh, college in pajamas. Okay. I'm sorry, you're just not fit for the Walmart family. <laughs> yeah. Eight-year art degree, very cool. Yeah, they got, they got like a song in the commercial too, just to like trick you into getting an education. Just any kind of gimmick to get you in there. Gotta get my degree. <laughs> I'm hot, so fuck me. Uh, yeah, college in all right, any requests before I go? <laughs> any other, anybody want the classics? How can I leave? I need to, I need to leave, but I've already... But just, <laughs> I don't even care about that one, but uh, for the few people who might remember, I think Rich Homie Kwan should sponsor a protein powder and call it Some Type of Way. It's, it's an old song and an old artist and nobody knows. They gave R. Kelly 30 years. You guys saw that? Yeah, they added up the ages of all his victims. And <laughs> now I'm trapped in the prison. I like rap, but rap seems to be the only genre of music that openly attacks the listener. Like the lyrics will be like, you broke, I'm rich, I fuck, yo bitch. Okay, this guy's mean. I like when they do the gun noises in the songs, too. My gun go bop, bop. My gun go brr. I'm like, have you ever heard a gun before? These weird fantasy noises. But uh, I heard a song by Sean Kingston the other day on the radio. You guys remember Sean Kingston? R&B singer. He got in a jet ski accident. I think that was his last big hit. And... And the song on the radio is called Take You There. And uh, if you don't remember the chorus of this song, it goes, We can go to the tropics, sip pina coladas, shorty, I can take you there. Or we can go to the slums where killers get hung, shorty, I can take you there. Who the fuck's going with the second option <laughs> on that? Really? We could sip in? Now let's go see where murderers get murdered. Save the other one for my birthday. All right, guys. Have a good night. I love you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys sticking around the whole time. Thank you, my good friends, John, Jay, and Brad. I love you so much. I'll miss you. I miss you. One more time. I miss you already. I miss you already. Thanks, guys. Yeah, hell yeah. We did. Thank you guys for hanging out. I appreciate it. Thank you for doing the train show. It crushed. It went so well. It did. I was really happy to be here. Also, free show and follow. I would have. I know. She was perfect. She was too good for the room. She was.